Hey everybody, it's Pete. Good morning. Welcome to a new episode of Stocks for Breakfast. Today we're going to talk about a question that we got from a recent subscriber. Um, and it was basically, to paraphrase the whole thing, uh, I would love to be able to identify the characteristics of a stock that have a high probability of being profitable. <laughs> well, that's a lot of, uh, a lot all packed into the one thing there. Um, absolutely possible. Uh, as we discussed last night in our coaching call, this is a part of tape reading, and tape reading is really building the argument, putting the pieces together for a stock that would have the probability of profit. Uh, we're not going to go into the details of what we taught in the coaching program last night, but we will talk about some of the basic characteristics. Uh, and believe it or not, it starts with learning what not to do. <laughs> It's a very interesting thing that everybody wants to just log in and race in and, and start making money. Um, but you need to first learn how to survive in the stock market. The market has so many different things going on at the same time. So you have to really learn how to stay away from danger. And when I say danger, I mean the opposite of the question, which is really understanding which stocks have very small probability of profit. Now, there are definitely some situations where you might find a stock that just out of nowhere exploded, uh, but that's not really what we're looking to do. That's great if you found it on that particular moment, but what we want to do is we want to set up trades where we go into the day, we go into the week, go into the month, and we are literally looking at the market and saying, that's the one, or that's five of them. And by the way, if you have five that look really good, we have no idea which one of those five is going to end up being profitable. Now, tell me if you've ever done this where you've had five stocks, you pick two out of the five, and the other three are the ones that move, right? We've all done that. That's real trading. Don't think that's you. Don't think, don't go looking for another system if you have one, if you have mine, the order flow, the boot camp. Uh, it's not the system. If the system has proven itself over time, if the system has given you money over time, don't go looking for a new system because one trade that worked that looked good didn't work out. That's a part of the probabilities. That's a part of trading that happens to everybody. And if you want to get around that, you want to actually really take that to another level. You really have to learn how to manage multiple positions at once. You have to learn how to work your orders. That's a big part of trading. So if you think that you're the only one that has trades that you, you nailed the one that didn't move, that happens to everybody. The key is paying attention to getting feedback from the market, which ones worked, which ones didn't, pulling the plug on the ones that didn't and adding to the other ones. But I wanna get back to the point that I, may, I said before. Oh, by the way, if you find these videos helpful, definitely click down and subscribe to the YouTube channel. That would be awesome. Uh, and if you wanna trade with me in real time for 30 days, click down and learn about the bootcamp as well. So I, I keep harping on this because it's a huge, huge, huge part of trading, which is fully understanding situations that um, are, are very low probability of following through on a regular basis. Now, probability by, very, by itself implies over time. Probability means that you're looking at a sample for something to happen probably over time, right? So that means that you need to go into the day, the week, the month, setting up situations for yourself, looking for, scanning, setting up situations for yourself that in the past have proven to follow through, have in the past have proven um, to, I don't want to say make money because that's too general of a term. That's why I keep using the term follow through. And the way that you do that is you identify what we call order flow. And the longer time frame that the smart money, that the market, that people that can push the market around have big demand and big supply in the market, the more obvious it is that you can spot what they're doing, the greater the likelihood that's going to continue until we see it change. And in our terminology, we talk about that, we call that, we say the tape has changed. So in order to know when the tape has changed, you need to know what it looks like perfectly. Because yeah, we talk about this quite a bit. There's your perfect trades, and then there's everything away from a perfect trade. And we're actually going to look at one stock that perfectly illustrates everything I'm talking about right now from actually maybe two or three stocks. That it looked perfect, and it was easier to make money. It was a very high likelihood of following through. And then the tape changed. We saw it wasn't perfect anymore, which like that should automatically tell yourself, Okay, something changed, which means now I have to manage the trade differently. I have to allocate buying and selling differently. 
if you even want to be in the trade at all. And that's a big part of trading too is, well, I made money in this stock in July. It's not July anymore. <laughs> As of right now, filming this in September, the beginning of September. Um, and these are the kind of things that traders kind of get mixed up or stepped up on or, or tripped up on. Uh, and it's a challenge for them, and that's not adapting as the market changes. We make money because the market changes, but then when the market changes, we, <laughs> we don't want to admit it changes. And that's a big part of trading. Um, so we're going to take a look at a couple of examples. So just keep in mind, you need to know what perfect looks like, and then you need to keep working your way away from perfect as you look at scenarios so that you can say, well, I know what perfect looks like, and that definitely does not look like perfect. When you start to do that, you start to pull away from trades, and you say, you know what? That's not what I'm looking for. And then actually do nothing. So the characteristics of profitable trades also works on the other side. So if you know what you're looking for, which is what really good traders do, I'm only looking for X, Y, and Z. If you don't see that, you have to stay away from it. But then the other part is when you do see it, you have to confidently trade it, which by the way, we did a video yesterday on how to get absolute unshakable confidence in your trading. I think you definitely want to watch it. Maybe I'll put, uh, I don't know how to do it on YouTube. <laughs> I'll put the button over here somewhere. Um, so we're going to take a look at a few stocks. We're going to first look at what perfect looks like and then how a stock wove its way away from perfect and how that ultimately translated into much more difficult and less confident trading in that stock, despite the fact that in the long term, it's still a buying opportunity. So we go from perfect to changing to not as good as it was. And then you as a trader have that decision. Do I still continue to trade this stock that's not perfect or anymore? Or do I look for another opportunity that's perfect right now? That's real trading where you alternate. You're not changing your strategy. You're finding trades that match your strategy. And that's dramatically different. And that's assuming you have a strategy in the first place. So we're going to walk you through just a little tiny piece of what that looks like today. Because again, I, I prefer you're in the boot camp so we can do this in real time together and you can get my entire order flow bootcamp, but we're going to look at it right now. So we're going to head over to the screen and we're going to take a look at, um, we're going to start out with Goldman Sachs and we're actually going to drill this down uh, bit by bit, bit by bit. So working from the daily chart backwards, the first thing we want to be looking at, and here's the image of Goldman Sachs for 2020. So obviously taking the pandemic out of the equation, we know that NASDAQ stocks, and we'll just take a quick look at the QQQ. NASDAQ stocks have a dramatically different look than financial stocks. So we'll look at Goldman Sachs and we'll look at JP Morgan. So you can see here from day to day, week to week, there isn't a lot of consistency of smart money saying, we're going to allocate money to this. We're going to create higher highs. We're going to hold higher lows. And we're going to do that from day to day. And by the end of the day, by the end of the week, we're going to hold those closes near the highs because we still want more of this stock. That's the very definition of order flow. The very definition of order flow is smart money, the market, the, the forces that have enough supplier demand that can push a stock around and want the stock and move it to different levels. They're controlling a stock in a way that they're allocating. And then other people, other institutions all see the same thing. It starts to move a stock. Now, the opposite of what I just discussed, which is this, right? We, we're actually seeing in a six and a half hour period, there was enough buying to open it on the low, close it on the high and hold it there. But then the next day, you, you start to see this indecision. You start to see where it opened up and closed within the same day. And from day to day and week to week, we're not seeing consistency. This should have been followed up by the same thing. It didn't. It got followed up by what we call a melted candle. So this is what not to trade. This is what to stay away from. Sure, you get one day where it does this, but that's not what we're looking for. We're looking for consistency from one day to the next, from one week to the next. So if we pull this out a little bit further, you can see, look at the weeks of indecision. From one week to the next, it almost opens and closes in exactly the same spot, which is why we call it indecision. We're not seeing these big green candles followed by another big green candle and closing on the high. That's what we want to see. So if we look at a stock like DocuSign for this year, you can see that there were weeks where it was really good and then probably a little profit taking and then five more weeks of buying, but then the tape changed again. So you start to see where you put the pieces together and then we zoom out on the monthly chart where we can see a very similar picture. So if you look at this picture and then we take a look at JP Morgan very quickly, the story is not the same. This is where advanced 
traders live. This is where traders that are consistently profitable live. You need to be able to look at a stock, and let's use Boeing as an example. Again, this is the monthly chart of Boeing. Here's the weekly chart of Boeing. You can see there's not, we're not, not even from one week to the next is there buying pressure. We see buying one week, and then we see nothing, and we see nothing, and we see nothing, and we see nothing, and we see nothing. We see nothing. From one week to the next, there's nothing going on. Sure, this will be in our list to look for a stock to uh, potentially buy if it does tip its hand finally. But then you take a look at a stock like this, Apple, obviously, where there's consistency from one week to the next. We take a look, I'm gonna zoom out to the daily chart. You take a look at a stock like Roku. This is a stock that's very enticing, but here's what the stock normally does. Weeks of indecision, then an explosion, then pulls back, then weeks of indecision and then an explosion. And now the stock actually is at a pretty interesting place. So this actually kind of now has elevated where it got through previous levels that it couldn't. And now it's pausing above that level after two days out of the last three of buying where smart money, where the market stepped up and it's giving you an opportunity to say, wow, this is pretty interesting. It's different because you can tell the difference between this where there was nothing going on. And when I say nothing going on, we trade stocks that are active every day, stocks that have large green, large red candles most of the time. These stocks that have what we call indecision candlesticks, that's where a lot of money goes to die. If you're forcing yourself to be in positions, if you're forcing the market to have to do something, as opposed to it's already doing something, that second part is a lot easier to, to go and find the money. The second part is a characteristic of a stock that has a high chance of making you money. There's also penny stocks or dollar stocks that become these $20 stocks. I, look, I don't recommend trading them. I don't suggest them in the boot camp. A lot of traders call them out and I'm flat out saying it. They're, they're, they're these one hit wonders that, yeah, they look awesome. If I bought it 5,000 shares of this and it went up to $20, the problem is most traders just keep getting greedy and they don't get out. And then that $20 stock comes all the way back down to three. It happened in Kodak uh, about a month ago where it went from $8 had news, went up to $60, and now it's down back at eight again. And I do know some people that are stuck holding it because they don't have the discipline or the strategy to get out of those positions if they're not working out. So just a quick tip as well of the characteristics of stocks that have a high probability of giving you money, they're market leaders. Big traders in history, the, the people that you read about, the people that are in the books, the people that write the books, the people that have a long track record of profitability, trade the market leaders. Sure, once in a while you read somebody found this tiny little stock in the middle of nowhere. That happens once in a while. Uh, nobody will say it doesn't happen, but do you, wanna, do you wanna go and look for something that happens once in a while, or do you wanna go and do something that you can pull money out of the market every week? To me, I'd rather be pulling money out of the market every week with predictability, with reliability. I wanna be the asset that goes and finds those opportunities, and they're usually in the market leaders. So take into consideration what I said today. First, you have to learn what not to do. And that means that you need your A-plus trade. You need to understand what your best opportunities are. And then when you start looking at charts, when you start looking at ideas, you should immediately say, well, that's not what I'm looking for. And then you stay away from those ideas. But then as you start to find some more ideas where you can say, okay, it looks like the smart money's doing something there and they've been doing it for a few weeks. That should get you sitting up in your seat and say, maybe I should be looking for an entry here because I don't need to find the top, I don't need to find the bottom, I just need to find when it's obvious and piggyback on top of that. That's where your trading really starts to become profitable and that's where trading starts to become fun. If you have any questions about this topic, leave me a comment below. If you'd like to join me in the bootcamp for the next 30 days, I'd absolutely love to have you there. It's such a tiny investment for what you get over 30 days. It's basically a 30-day seminar. Uh, and if you're in there, let me know you came from YouTube. I'd love to hear from you. Have a great day, everybody.